guys, welcome to Irish Funny Vlogs. Welcome back to another Premier Division review show. Philip Warner again with me today. Philip, how are you? Good, Keith. Enjoying the sunshine yourself? Try, trying to enjoy the sunshine. Yeah, definitely, Philip. Yeah. And, and watch all these games as well. It's an awkward one, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. Uh, plenty of football, I suppose. It's, not, it's, it's probably not a bad complaint. No, it's not the worst complaint in the world. We'll start off with the brand new L and a finished Derry City 1, Bohemians 1. Did you catch any of this yourself, Philip? Yeah, I watched the last uh, 15 minutes of it, actually. Yeah, so <laughs> The best part. Yeah, the, the best part of the game. Um, I was just I just decided to I'll throw it on because it's, I've seen it was tight, you know. Um, and then just as as to, as the game kind of came towards the close, it was just torn around and Derry step up and get an 85th minute goal. And all of a sudden you're saying to yourself, oh, Bowles have gone and done it again, like, you know. Um, obviously, we with, with, with our side, with Tala, it was the same with us. We Well, not so late, but we can see the an equaliser. But I just thought mm. Bows, Bows are great to watch at, the, at this part of the season. I think, you know, they're constantly slipping up. And look, I suppose Derry again, just go and show how determined they are. And I, from what I watched, I thought they, they definitely deserved it, you know. Um, they pushed right towards the very end and they were probably lucky not to get the winner. But... I suppose when you're one nil down with five minutes to go, you'll take a draw any day of the week. Yeah, no, to be honest, I watched the whole game, but I'll be honest, for first 30 minutes was actually okay, but after that, it completely dipped both teams, and uh, it wasn't until late on, the drama. Um, obviously, Ku scored a fantastic goal. It should have been the winner. Yeah. It should have been good enough to win the game. And they defended all well. They defended all game very well, actually, Bohemians, Philip, but again, they gave away a sloppy goal, though, at the end as yeah. well. I mean, it was ping-ponging in the area. And it came out to Walsh and uh, the keeper Todd had done well to nearly save yeah. it. It was definitely over the line. But like you're right, Derry did deserve a draw, but both no team deserved to win the match was, would be the point I'd make. No one was absolutely yeah. brilliant. It was poor for a lot and scrappy for long spells of the game. But again, Bowles be sick. And I mean, I don't know. How, we talk about how many points Rovers have won laid on in games. Bowles have done the opposite. They've dropped a yeah. serious amount of points laid on and they've done it in the cars. I think we spoke about this last week. They've done it in the corresponding fixture earlier on the season when Derry got two goals as well. Um, yeah. They've done it again and it's killing them, to be honest with you. They're on 21 points. They look a good side, but late goals are absolutely killing them at the moment, aren't they, in fairness? Yeah, big time. And I suppose, long may it last from, from a Rovers perspective, <laughs> but like... You, you have to like you have to have some sort of sympathy for them like do you know what I mean because like they're not playing too bad that's the thing like do you know what I mean mm. they're playing okay now at the start of the season I didn't think they were great but they have gotten yeah. better but again th those frailties at the back just seem to be haunting them week in week out and you know all the ball bounces around the box someone just needs to put their foot through it it doesn't matter where it goes do you know what I mean like it's or even just a, like being headed back into danger and all, like it just doesn't make sense. Just that's put your obviously, foot through it. Philip, to be honest, obviously nerves and it's gotten in on them now because, as I said, they defended actually fairly well for the most yeah. of the game. Kelly and Feely were actually very good at centre back. But to do, if that happens after five minutes, that same situation. I don't think that ends up in a goal. Do you know what I mean? So it's gotten in yeah. on them now where they're thinking, like, like a team that scores a lot of goals late, it kind of they feel confident they're going to do it, but they feel like they nearly have to be two or three up before they feel like they've actually won the match. And that that's the thing there in that situation, I think, with Bowles. But Derry, as you said, yeah, um, they'll be delighted with the point in the end. They won't be too happy with the overall performance. I thought Owen Toll was brilliant, by the way, at the back for them. And the way yeah. he drives out with the ball as well at times, it's great to watch. Um, but again, um, not to keep coming back to it, but another game at Parkhouse it scored. That's 15 games, no goals. But it's not only that. His confidence is shot, I think. He didn't contribute anything to this game. Didn't really cause Feely and Kelly many problems, even though they played well. Uh, didn't really run the chance to hold up the ball well either. So, you know, it's just, I don't know if a few games on the bench bring him on when the game's a bit, with 20 minutes to go, stretched or something might be suitable. But, uh at the moment, there's a killer there for Derry City. They're doing well everywhere else, but they need him to get a goal or two, you know? That's it, yeah. And look, I, I suppose I said it previously, Keith, I do think he will come good, but it's mm. just, as you said, his confidence is on the floor. And like you see it with Premier League strikers, if, if you're not at it and you're not feeling it, like it's, it's a very, very long wait to get that goal. And look, maybe all he, he probably just needs the ball to bounce off from two yards out and roll into yeah. the net and he'll start going like, and start firing. But just doesn't seem to be happening for at the moment. I suppose the concerning part is, as you said, he didn't really contribute much, you know. Um, and 
You've got other players that probably haven't been scoring as much this season throughout the league, but are still contributing towards their teams. Like, you know, and that's something that you need to make sure you're doing if you're not scoring. So, look, I keep my fingers crossed because, as I said before, I like Derry, I like everything about Parkhouse himself. He just mm. needs that bit of luck to go his way. And I guarantee you they'll just start rolling in then. Yes, this is just because he was seen as such a big signing as well. And um, speaking of, about a lack of confidence, Dundalk won water for three at Oriel Park. And, uh, I was shocked when I seen this result. I did watch it back, actually, Philip. I managed to get time to watch this one back as well. And uh, you know what? I'll say, as a Pats fan for a second, I'm actually really annoyed Pats lost to the dark last time out <laughs> because <laughs> in between, they've lost 5-1 to Bohemians and beaten 3-1 at home to Waterford. And before we talk about Waterford, um, some of the defending this game from the dock was a pure disgrace. I don't know if you've seen the goals, but um, they had a corner and their left back um, had time and space had a cigar, lit up the cigar, you know what yeah. I mean? Smoked the cigar, crossed it, and ended up getting a goal from it. I mean, some of the yeah. sloppy goals they gave away. Did you see any of the goals yourself? Yeah, I, I did see that one actually, and I thought it was me. You're out there, like to be honest with you. Like, like, you quite, yeah, that's it's stuff. If you if you if you're boy. playing nine aside, Philip, and you're seeing that, you'd be giving out to your man, like. Yeah, yeah, and look, I suppose that's kind of that's that's the attitude I think of Dundalk at the minute. It's just. No one cares, like you know. And I seen today. I think Shields is on his way out the door now. It looks like it's the uh, infield it's yeah. tied up. Yeah. So, I it's it's for as a bit looking at it as as Dundalk. Let's be honest, Dundalk are a big club, and they have been for the past ten years. It I don't see a turnaround around now. Do you know what I mean? Like I think this is kind of the final straw. It looks like the owners want out. It just looks a uh, shambles, and it's it's really really sad to see. Um. Look, that may open the door for someone else to come and step into the the big three clubs in the country or the big four clubs, if you want to put it that way. But it's just so like it's unbelievable. You can't you can't believe it's happening so quickly. Like, do you know what I mean? Like in the space of three, four, five months. Like now, we got we probably seen a bit of a decline coming over the last year or so. But mm. I think the last couple of months it's just really, really just took a, a big steep it's going dive. Similar like, to Cork City at this minute, isn't it? It's very similar. Yeah. Isn't it? Yeah, it, it, it is like, and it's, it's, I think it's happening that a little bit quicker, to be honest with you, Keith. It's just, it's shock. But as you said, for that, that goal, it, it was pathetic, like, you know, and I think overall, look, you have to give credit to Waterford, you know what I mean? Like, as we said, Dundalk were a big club. The fact they went and put in such a great performance, like, you can only give them credit. Um, it'll be interesting now to see if, if Bertram can keep that going because, as we said, Dundalk just weren't that, and it doesn't look like anyone cares. Maybe they come up against a side next week that are really determined and really want to put in a, a, a shift, unlike Dundalk, and hopefully they can get something out because I do think we need to keep them in the league as well, but uh, Dundalk are just the shambles at the minute. Yeah, you said Dundalk weren't at it, but Waterford still have to go and do their job, didn't they? In fairness, yeah. they've come up against teams who haven't been at it this season <clears> and Waterford haven't managed to win the game. The fact that they went one down and came back and uh, won the game 3-1 like is... Uh, Testament to them like Martin got two yeah. goals Griffin getting one good play from power Adam O'Reilly played well they're trying to play through the midfield a bit more with Keith O'Reilly and Griffin which I was giving out about under Sheedy and Hull I thought it was just long ball long ball long ball yeah. and in my opinion some of their better players and midfield players who like to get on the ball it just doesn't make any sense these people are qualified and like I'm, who am I like you know what I mean and you can see these yeah. things it's very frustrating I think as well Philip but look they'd be delighted with that result excellent performance obviously takes them to ninth in the league and as you say be interested to see now if they can kick on and get a couple of results because regardless of who they've beaten or how they've played the opposition that's a massive result for Waterford because um, a few weeks ago even if the opposition didn't turn up Waterford still didn't look capable of actually getting a result yeah. I think you said it about Wexford actually Keith uh, mm. in the preview show this week about if they get a result they can mm. confidence is sky high do you know what I mean they are Waterford are a young side as well so like they, exactly they pop I'd say confidence now in that camp has gone through the roof with that that performance, you know, and I think uh, Bertrand will push that through, like the, the fact that we've just went and beat Dundalk 3-1, do you know what I mean? And like, the, the, again, Dundalk weren't that, but Waterford were brilliant. And I, I thought the captain in particular, I watched back a bit of highlights. Young Nilo Keith. Yeah, he was yeah. brilliant, I thought. I was very, very impressed. And uh, do you know something? I, as I said, I hope Waterford stay in the division. So hopefully there's another couple of results to bounce off the back of this. 
Yeah, no, it was great to see them get a result, but um, like you, I could talk about Dundalk all day, but we won't have enough time. <laughs> uh, Shamrock Rovers won, Phil Harps won, Philip, and ironically, we'll get into the other games later. That draw is enough to actually put Shamrock Rovers top of the league at the end of the weekend, yeah. which you probably didn't think on Friday night. Shock. Yeah, Aaron Green getting the early goal after eight minutes, Foley after 55 minutes. I'll actually throw something out here before I forget, but we had fans back, obviously, and we had a massive crowd at Tallow Stadium, big, big crowd, thousand people, whatever. But over the course, would you believe, of the 10 games over the weekend, one home win, and that was Galway in the last minute. <laughs> yes, it was a bit of a shock, actually. Yeah. I suppose, um, you quite, I kind of think everyone kind of thought with fans coming back this week, it would be a lot of home wins, you know. Again, football, it's its the thing we love about it. It's so unpredictable. And, uh, yeah, look, I suppose if we're talking about Rovers, I just... It was a bit of a kick in the gut, to be honest with you. I just didn't think we were good enough at all. Um, like, look, we created chances and we, well, we created a few chances, didn't create too much. But look, again, Finn Harps, I just can't stop praising them. Like, they're just such a good football team for what they have in, the, in their arsenal, you know. Um, Adam Foley, in fairness now, seven goals, joint top scorer in the league. And, um, you know, he's very versatile as well. He could, he could play anywhere, I think. He, I'm being honest with you. I just I couldn't see him not fitting into any team. Maybe the top clubs, he might not make the start 11, but he's definitely an asset to anyone, you know. Um, yeah, look, again, look, we're obviously disappointed. Uh, more points dropped, but, you know, I think the, 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 the absentees, are, we're not completely back to where we need to be yet in terms of bodies coming back we still have a couple to come back so the bench um, wasn't very strong for this game and when I yeah. say that I don't want to be criticising young players but you know what I mean like uh, the experienced players they yeah. lacked experience in this game as well and it's difficult that as well for a team that's going for the league title is what I mean as well like you know yeah I, I don't know as well I just I think a couple of players just haven't been at it the past couple of weeks I know yeah. the break now but before the break the likes of Gary O'Neill and all, he just mm. he hasn't looked himself as of as of yet this part of the season. Anyways, but uh, you it's know, not the balance we were talking about earlier, Philip. That they lack a bit of balance without Burn and McInniff. That you know Gary O'Neill knew his role with them and the team, for example. And yeah, I don't, I just find midfield's the hardest position. If you get a midfield right, but if you get a if you can't get a settled or a proper combination, it really it is the engine room. It really is of a team. Like, yeah, I think I think as well. Uh, Keith, we're missing Dylan Watts magnificent. Mm. Like he's mm. he's been magnificent this season. I think mm. we're missing him big time. Um, I think he's not too far away, which kind of does give a bit of optimism, you know. Mm. Um look, he's not he's not the pro- he's not the answer to all of our problems. Like I, mm. I do think we we we're, we're not we're not being uh we're not being forward thinking enough. Like I just think mm. we the way we're going with the way we're p- passing the ball, it's just there's no penetration. It just looks like they're, they're hanging on for something to happen. And uh, I suppose Mandrew's kind of not fizzled out in the past few weeks, but it hasn't been to what he was at the start of the season. Um, but again, you have to put it down to the break, in my opinion, and mm. just need maybe another week or two to get going. Rovers do this a lot. Like We do have this little part in our season where we drop points, but we'll get going again and we'll go on a run. And I think that'll probably be the same when we get those bodies back. But again, yeah, disappointed overall. But uh, I suppose you can only look forward now to next week and hopefully get three points on the board. I suppose one of the positives is that Rory Gaffney's got six goals this season as well. And I think they're all from play, yeah. maybe bar one, if I'm right. Um, one might have been a penalty, but he's been yeah. um, a success story for Rovers this season. Probably the biggest one in many ways. Like in that. Yeah, and I suppose that is the fact that he has those is a bit of a credit to him. Like, you know, I don't mm. think the service has been fantastic mm. into him. Like, you know, and... Uh, I think Green. I know Green scored as well, Jack Knight, but I just yeah. I think he's been, I think Green's been brilliant, but I just don't think he's suited to playing out wide anymore. Just the type of player that he's kind of molded into. Um, I, I just don't think he's got that creative spark that Rovers had last season coming in from inside at the wings to inside when it was Jack or someone else out in the wing. You know, Aaron doesn't offer that in my opinion. But uh, now look. Gaffney's done really, really well up front and I personally probably would put him just out of green now at this moment in time but any, any, either one of them could start up front and do a job. Yeah, I mean, do you think Finn Harps deserved a point in the end here? Uh, yeah, I do, Keith. Being yeah. realistic, I do. And I know a couple of lads said, I oh, know they probably didn't but I just thought everything they've mm. done, they've done well and it's it's another credible performance that they've had on the road and it's not the first one this season so I'm not going to come around and say, oh, it was fluke. 
you know, Rovers could have won the game, don't get me wrong, but I think there's, mm. there was a bit of controversy towards the end with a couple of penalty decisions. I don't <laughs> think any of them were penalties. Yeah. I think they were laughable, to be honest with you. Um, a couple of Rovers fans did say that they thought they were. I personally didn't think. I thought Gannon was looking for it and he was rightly booked. But mm. Yeah, no, I, th- I think they were deserving of the point, Keith, and I think they'll do well to, and they'll pick up more points throughout the course of the season. And the Sligo Rovers, and obviously that was uh, <laughs> a good result for Shamrock Rovers. Sligo yeah. Rovers won, dropped the United two. A little bit of a surprise. Chris Lyons with two stunning goals actually in the game as well. I thought yeah. Darren Mark was actually brilliant this game. Brilliant. Since he's been... I tell you what, with Drotted at the moment, they brought in the likes of Darren Markey, uh, Daniel O'Reilly, Gary Deegan, Ronan Murray, who were kind of going nowhere at their previous clubs. And they're all starring for Drotted. Like, that's amazing management, yeah. in my opinion. Like, I mean, Daniel O'Reilly couldn't get in a team that was uh, ended up getting relegated. Now, I think he should have been, but that's, you know, that's irrelevant to my point, yeah. I suppose. But Deegan was kind of, uh, he had good games, bad games, you know. Marky was lost know. to Pats the last couple of years as well. But he was outstanding in this game as well. I thought he was absolutely brilliant this game. Obviously, Lions yeah. and two goals is brilliant as well. But the Preston, I think Drottie United are the best team of Preston in the league. I really do. They were unbelievable the oh. other day again against Sligo. Absolutely, yeah, and it's it's credit to him, like you know what Clancy's doing. He's got everyone on the boil, like and everyone thought, oh, geez, you know something. These performances will start to fizzle out, and the squad they probably don't have the squad to do it, but they're they're shown they can, like do you know what I mean. And they did have. Let's be honest, Keith, they had a couple of injuries. Do you know what I mean? And I know one or two games they might have struggled through the game, but like it's been brilliant, and I I can't go past how well they've been to go and get a result against Sligo. Do you know what I mean? Sligo were, were, were doing so, so well coming into this game. Do you know what I mean? I know the break and all came at the wrong time for them. Definitely. And that's, yeah, as you said, like, well, I think that's probably something now that's kind of even been emphasised more because I think that momentum was just held up there with the break and they haven't been able to get going off the bat straight away. So, um, Lions goals are brilliant. I did watch a bit of this game. I didn't watch all of it. I got back through it uh, on the team, the player yoke. But, uh, yeah. I have to say that they were very, very, very well deserved of it. And I, I think Sligo didn't really offer much in the game, like in terms of going forward. I thought they had ball, the ball for a good bit of the game, but just weren't able to do anything with it. It was like watching Rovers over again. Like, and I think, uh, I think it was it was credit to Trotter because they 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 were very well deserved of this result. Like this wasn't just. Uh, a result that was a shock That's a result, grab like, kind of a thing exactly yeah it, it wasn't that like Drada went up there and they played really really well and they deserved their results so look again you can just hope that Drada bring it into next week and the, I suppose Sligo will be hoping to put that on the back burner mm. and get back going again so <laughs> all square at the top well the point I was making about Sligo actually it might have been the last video I'm not sure but I was saying how they haven't really hit a bad patch yet and I've also said that uh, if they're missing one or two key players, they could struggle potentially. Gary Buckley and Parks, particularly Gary Buckley, was out for this game. And for me, they looked all over the place at the back. I know John Mahan's a good defender, but it really proved how good Buckley is with him, the fact that he wasn't playing in this game. because so they were all over the place at the back. I'm not saying this is going to be their bad spell necessarily, because they can come back next week and the week after and win. But I do think they will hit a dodgy patch. Oh, yeah, it has to keep. No one, like... <laughs> With, with our half season last year, I suppose we didn't have that happen to us. But, uh, you know, I think um, the, everyone's due a bit of bad luck throughout the season, whether that be results, injuries, you know, it just it's football. This, these things happen throughout a division. And uh, I suppose Sligo, uh, it goes to show maybe, Keith, that they're kind of improving, but they haven't got that squad depth just yet. They've got a really, really good starting eleven that's capable of putting in a really mm. good shift and beating any team on any given day. But if you start getting a few uh, strikes on the board and a few players out injured, it's a different story altogether. Like, do you know what I mean? And I think that's just showed with Stoigo. Maybe next year they might not have this sort of situation where they, they lose one or two and they might struggle. They might have got brought in a few more again. And I suppose his recruitment has been very good up in Stoigo since he's came in. So I can only see that continuing. But uh, yeah, look, you have to look at it and say, look, you need to get through these things. You want to win leagues or you want to get into Europe. You have to get through these sorts of phases. So, Absolutely. Yeah. Finished long for Town 1, St. Pat's Athletic 3 at uh, City College Stadium. I thought this was going to be tough for Pat's Phillip. And um, to be honest, for most of the game, I thought Pat's were dominant, largely. They, uh, yeah. Stacey even made a few very good saves in this match, actually, for Longford. Maddie Smith missed two kind of sitters, if I'm honest with you. He missed two great chances as well. 
Benson eventually gave Pats the lead in 41 through a corner. It was headed into the net. And then Longford got back into the game early in the second half and Dobbs got a penalty mistake by Yaris and it ended up in a bit of a calamity penalty situation. But it was a poor mistake by the goalkeeper. And Longford kind of had the gander up actually then and I was a bit worried personally, but Manny Smith's goal came at the right time actually and yeah. that's got obviously a third with Coughlin. But um, important win for Pats after losing hope to Dundalk. Um, Longford again were plucky, but just not good enough ultimately. Yeah, and I suppose it's, it seems to be the story of their life, and I think it will be for the rest of the season. They just mm. they just don't quite have enough to do it. But uh, look, again, Pats, to be honest, Keith, as you said, you thought it was going to be a tough game. I thought yeah. they done really, really well. I thought the, the response to the goal when they conceded was absolutely fantastic. And what there was no heads down. Everyone was like, right, let's go. We need to get back going. And I thought they'd done that. Um, well, look, I suppose with Pats, they're right back in the mix again. Do you know what I mean? Not that they were out of it, but they're, they're that bit closer with that with the results going the way they have this weekend. And you know, it's it's really anyone's race at the minute. But I suppose Pats kind of had that bit of uh, that phase you were just talking about with Sligo that everyone has to have one. Mm. Pats have kind of had that now. I think you know, and I think now is probably a good chance for them to kick on and start getting a few results under their belt. Do you know what I mean? Um, one little advantage, big... Philip, to have to Sligo as an example. So Sligo in Europe and Pats aren't. Now, I have talked about uh, Pats squad being a little small, still think they need a few bodies. But not being in Europe might be an advantage over Sligo in that sense, like, you know? If they yeah, can stay with it. them. Yeah, of course, Keith. Like, at this stage, like, if you look at it now, it gives them longer time to recover and get players back if they're out. And, like, that's, that's obviously, it's great financially for, the, for any club to be in Europe. But I suppose... When you're coming off, when you're coming off and looking at it and saying, "Well, we actually have 10, 10 or seven to ten days to recover for a game," mm. not usually that, but in around the mm. week to recover for a game, we don't have a game during the week that we have to worry about, or we're not traveling to Bratislava or whatever <laughs> you're playing in Europe. Do you know what I mean? Like it's you've you've got a really good opportunity to get some momentum down because you've got time to recover and get players back, as I said, and it'll just mean you're fresher as well from the end of the season. It's a long season as well, and. I think that will work out in Pats' favour. Um, I was I was actually really, really impressed with, as I said, how they responded. But just throughout mm. the game, I thought they managed it really, really well. You know, um, up until they conceded, like they, were, I thought they were pretty solid. You know, and mm. I thought after that as well, when they stepped on the gas, I just thought Longford couldn't live with them, and it was a really, really impressive performance from Pats. Yeah, definitely. Look, Philip, we'll leave it there. Thanks for coming on. Guys, please subscribe. Hit your bell notification button. And what else? Comment below. Cheers. Thanks very much. And like the video, actually. Don't forget about that. <laughs> Cheers, Philip. Well, has to be.